What's going on everybody? My name is Chad. Welcome back to the Wisco Boater channel. Uh, I'm going to get started on uh, the frames for the bosun. Uh, I just went to the uh, lumber store and just bought the uh, first set of timbers for frame one and frame two. Uh, so I bought some uh, one by four eight foot sections of number two pine and one by six uh, eight foot section of uh, number two pine as well. This is a two by six eight foot section of SPF. So those are the boards that I'm going to start with and uh, paid a little bit more money for these than you would at uh, one of the big box stores, but I uh, always try to support the local businesses here where I live. So uh, these boards were uh, $32. So first expenses of the uh, bosun come in at 32 bucks. So let's get started on measuring out and marking off some frames and I'll start cutting some boards. Start by making the stem. So if I look at the instructions here, it just says make up the frames, transom and stem as on the frame drawings, which I have here. And if we look at the uh, schedule, uh, material schedule, I'm just gonna go right down the line. So right up here, I'm gonna start with the stem, uh, probably one of the easier pieces to make, so it makes sense to start with that. And then I'll just go right down the line here with sides, joints, and the two bottom pieces. The stem is this piece right here. This is the bottom. And this will be the tip of the bow. It's uh, five inches wide at the widest point right here, which I believe this, this line right here is the board itself, which parallels this line here. So that's just a straight five inch cut. And then I'll mark out where to cut this piece off here. Uh, this little triangular piece gets made out of this piece that gets cut right there. So pretty good use of uh, the board uh, without wasting too much material. Now I've got my table saw set up out here. And the first board, this is a eight foot piece of two by six, and it's just regular SPF, but this is a really, really nice piece of SPF. We're very limited on the number of knots uh, in the board. I think I'm gonna use this side. Uh, this side down here has a couple other knots in it. So this end is looking a little bit better on both sides. Uh, just some real small, small knots, so. Uh, very, very nice board to start with. So I'll cut that off uh, three feet, one inch, I believe is the length. And then I'll rip it uh, um, both sides. Just, uh, actually I only need to rip one side to make it nice and uh, nice and square. The other side gets, gets cut off because of that curve. And I'll sand it, make it nice and smooth and pretty. Now, the reason that I'm uh, using SPF, I think I already mentioned it, mentioned it in a, in a previous video is the, uh, what's it called? Piranha pine that's called for in the plans is an endangered species. Uh, so I'm not going to use it. Uh, it's actually not a pine. Uh, my, it's just named Piranha pine. Uh, I won't go into the details of that wood cause I'm not gonna use it. SPF, if you're unfamiliar, is uh, short for spruce pine or fir. And it's a pretty much standard building material for uh, studs for houses and, and uh, other structures that are built. Very easy to work with and for the stem, which is a thicker piece, um, it just uh, makes sense to use a, a workable piece of wood and uh, the rest of it, the rest of the frames are going to be made out of uh, number two pine, which is a is the second highest grade of, uh, of well, I guess technically there's two grades above number one, which are for like, you know, art and cabinet, high end cabinet making. And then there's number one pine, number two pine, number three and number four. The number two is um, nicely uh, pre-finished, um, very, very limited number of knots throughout the board. The boards that I picked out are nice and straight and all those will look real nice. So SPF for the stem. Number two pine for frames uh, one, two, and three. 
and then the transom um i'll either make out of uh, i'll make it out of bcx if i can find it which is marine grade plywood it's not required uh acx is much easier to find so might end up making it out of uh of acx and i do believe there is one piece of mahogany that is used in the transom but otherwise it's going to be uh, uh number two pine as well so let's get started on cutting some wood so the uh, board is cut it's uh using using uh metrics 4.8 inches in width right now which matches the width on the plans now there's a couple different ways to get the shape of the piece that you're working on onto the board one of them is with tracing paper with carbon tracing paper which i have some coming i thought i had some but i don't so there's tracing paper coming from Amazon, which should be here in a couple days. In the meantime, uh, what I'm gonna do is just take um, uh, an X-Acto knife and cut out just little uh, holes along the way, make little hash marks, and I'll connect the dots. This is a pretty simple piece to make, so I'm not worried about not getting the curve right or anything like that using this method. Uh, but the other frames and stuff be a lot easier with tracing paper because they're all straight lines and I can just put a ruler on it, trace it out, and go cut it. So with this one, put the board underneath, get it lined up just about right. You can actually see through the paper enough to see the board. I'll line up this edge that I'm working on right here with the edge of the board because that's the, the side of the board I just ripped. It's nice and straight. And I'll mark out this curve here after I get it uh, pinned down. I'll, just, uh, I'll stick it down with some pins just so it doesn't move or some tape or something. Get the shape drawn and then go make some more cuts. All right, so here's what I've done. I haven't made any marks yet. I just cut out little holes Along the way here, that's uh, that's a do not cut line. That's just a mark for the top of the gunnel. Uh, but I'll mark, make little marks along the way here and then connect the dots up around this curve. Uh, I was real careful not to cut out any holes um, along the frame members that are on the page. I'll get these marked, connect the dots, and then we'll work on cutting out that stem piece. first piece the stem rough cut um, my saw blade was a little slight slight angle you, know, you I don't know if you can see it kind of see it that angle goes slopes down just a little bit but I can take off the line with a belt sander and uh, make it nice and nice and square so that's the bow stem of the boat. So now before we go any further, just wanted to double check to make sure that we fit the plans nicely. Okay, got the line straight there. Fits right back here, comes up. Got a little bit of uh, extra material right through here that I can take off with the sander. It doesn't really matter. And the thing that I'll have to be sure of is get this, this edge here square. So gotta hook up the belt sander. 
All right, so I'm gonna uh, sand the edges square, get them nice and smooth. I got one little repair I gotta do. Um, I chipped a piece of wood, so I'll get some wood glue, glue that back together, and uh, hopefully get this into a nice, close to finished form. So here's where I messed up a little bit and I split the wood right there. So I glue that back down and then I got to score up this surface, but that can be actually be done later. But uh, there we go, it came out really nice. I, I might run the sander down each side real quick just to smooth down the grain and take it back in and work on that next piece. I was trying to save a little bit of time because it's getting dark and colder, so I went ahead and cut this piece without filming it, but you can see how these two pieces come together. Right like that. And what I'm gonna do is uh, put down some wax paper and mix up a little bit of epoxy or uh, resin Put those two together. I'm also going to fix this piece right here and uh, let this set up overnight. And then tomorrow I will sand both of these pieces together. So they're uh, essentially one piece. There's a little bit of a lip on this piece here. I didn't quite get it sanded down uh, to take the grain out like this one is. So. I'll take care of that tomorrow. So the process is the exact same uh, for the bosun that I used for the tugboat. I'm using Bondo fiberglass resin. This is a waterproof resin that is uh, structurally sound. Have had great luck with this this product over the years in uh, several boat projects. And like I said, the entire tugboat was built with this and it came out great. Um, I restored a 1981 Glastron SSV-167 using this stuff. So I've got uh, three tablespoons of resin in here and I'm going to use half of a quarter teaspoon of hardener. Half is a little bit difficult to measure. Uh, when using a rounded bottom uh, measuring device, I'll mix up the hardener, get all the resin back down here. And you do want to have it really well mixed. Don't want to create any soft spots in the resin. A little bit of hardener goes a long way. Once this is mixed, I'll uh, probably have about eight, 10 minutes of uh, working time. It's uh, 58, 59 degrees in the shop right now. So we're a little lower temperature than or the working times call for on the can. So should have plenty of time to get these two pieces uh, put together and fix this cracked piece. Okay, I've scraped the edges, got it nice and mixed up. 
And what I'm gonna do is just take a little brush here, open this up, maybe, <laughs> open that up just enough to dab in some resin. And I do want a good coat, so. Uh, I am gonna clamp it so it's gonna squeeze out. Yeah, spilled a little bit, but that's all right. It'll sand right off. I'm gonna set this aside for a second. Get my little clamp. I need to clamp it like this. That's right. And again, I'm not, not terribly worried about working times right now because it's a little bit cooler in here than uh, what you would normally want to, or what the can says for drying times. So, push the board down hard that way. Clamp it nice and tight that way. Actually, maybe I should put wax paper between. Yeah, I'll do it this way. That way, the resin doesn't stick to my clamp. All right, any squeeze out for there, sand off later. Now we'll come down here and we'll work on this piece. So what I'm gonna do on this side, I've got wax paper laid down on this board. It's not gonna stick, I've got Indicate or indice marks right here, so I can put this together. Got two big bar clamps here, ready to go. So I'm going to spread the resin all over this surface, stick these two together, get that indice lined up, and then clamp them. Nice good pressure, that good amount of pressure on a flat board and then tomorrow I'll come back and use the uh, uh, belt sander sand this down to match up with the, uh, the other piece here so I'm just going to paint it on coat the whole thing it doesn't have to be super thick you're going to get quite a bit of squeeze out anyway and actually with resins and epoxies, typically the thinner the layer, the stronger it's gonna be. It's kind of not really uh, intuitive to think of it that way, but you do wanna squeeze out the epoxy so you have a nice thin layer and it will be extremely strong. Epoxies and resins generally known to be stronger than the wood that you're joining. And this brush has got a lot of bristles that are falling out of it. That's kind of annoying. All right, got a nice coating on that. And get the indices lined up just like that. Take my bar clamps. I'm trying not to squeeze too hard yet because I got to be sure and keep the indices lined up. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but it's a nice good squeeze out. I got a little gap up front here. I'll show it in a second, but I'm gonna just drizzle some epoxy down the front. And I'll clean up this corner later. Just kind of drop it and let it run down. Fill in that gap just a little bit. Okay, I'll show it the other way. So you can see the squeeze out here. Uh, the, same, the squeeze out will be the same on the other side, except for it's gonna spread out onto the wax paper. And that's that gap I was talking about. Just drizzled a little bit of uh, resin down the front. 
And as this stuff hardens or starts to cure, it actually gets, it starts to thicken. You can push it back up into the gap. And as it, as it starts to harden in a few minutes here, it's not gonna run back down to the bottom. Indices perfectly lined up, so I know I've got the correct spacing. So I'll just kind of keep doing that as the resin starts to set. And we'll let it sit overnight. So we'll come back tomorrow and uh, get this thing sanded down and start on the next piece, which is uh, frame number one. All right, it's the next day and everything's cured. Uh, we'll take the clamps off the stem, get the wax paper off. It'll just peel right off. You'll see here in a second. And then I'm going to take it outside and sand this uh, lip off of this piece here, make it flush with the rest of the stem, and essentially it's going to end up looking like one piece. It's really, really windy out there today. I don't know. Yeah, screenshot, it's not that great. But it's uh, it's super windy, it's cold, 30 degrees. I think the wind chill is like 17. So uh, I've got it up to uh, 58 here in the shop. So comfortable in here, but I'm not gonna take the camera out and uh, video sanding this down just because it's just too cold. And I'm gonna go out and sand and come right back in. So uh, let's get this unclamped. All right, let's start here. So the wax paper does not stick to resin or epoxy, so that comes right off. And you can see the uh, the repair is done. I'll sand that down, and this all looks really good. A little bit of stickiness on the bottom here. Oh, it just rubbed right off. So that's all good. And then for this one. nice smooth side over here uh, still a little bit of you can still kind of feel the grain a little bit so um, I will sand that down just a little bit just to make it nice and smooth but uh, yeah this looks really good take it outside sand it and I'll show you the finished result so before I show the, the finished result of the sanded piece it is all sanded uh, this joint failed with the uh, the belt sander going over it. I'm not really sure what happened. I kind of feel like the, I must have used a little bit of epoxy or a little bit of resin that wasn't fully mixed up with hardener because it's kind of sticky, tacky, but it's obviously not cured. So, um, got interrupted because the dog started barking at the FedEx guy and took care of that. So anyway, I right, kind of forgot where it was uh, with a couple of interruptions there, but anyway, I need to get this put back down. So what I'm going to do is use this awesome stuff called Bondo glass. Works great for uh, cars, boats, wood projects. Um, it's just simply fiber reinforced filler. And then you use this hardener Mix it up and it hardens in five minutes, sandable in 10 to 20 minutes. So this is a quick, real quick fix for um, this little mistake here. So I'm going to mix a little bit up on this piece of cardboard, dab a little in there with a mixing stick, clamp it, let it sit for a few minutes, sand it, and then I'll show you the finished product finally. So it's not gonna take very much. I always end up mixing more than I need though. So that's gonna be plenty for this little job. Squeeze the hardener, because this can separate and get some liquidy looking stuff. The uh, ratio of hardener to filler is to kind of build 
up a pile a half inch or so high. Doesn't matter the width, as long as it's a half inch high, and put hardener across it. Like that. Works every time. Mix it up into kind of a brown, reddish brown looking paste. And then I always kind of spread it thin just to make sure that I get longer working time out of it. Stuff this down inside there. And a lot of it's gonna squeeze out obviously, but and again here, I'm not worried about it getting on the wood outside of the repair because that sands off nicely. We'll just cover this up. Get a piece of wax paper and clamp it again. Okay, got it clamped good and tight. Sorry, I didn't show that. What I'm gonna do now is take a stick and kind of smooth out some of this filler underneath the wax paper just so I don't have such a big lump of filler to sand down later. All right, so we'll let this sit for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, if I can get this to stay in place. Come back and sand this all off, and this piece will be done. All right, so I let this sit a little bit longer, 20 minutes. Wax paper peels right off, it's cured. So now I can take this out and sand it. I'm just gonna slice this off. All right, I'll be right back and show you the results. Here we go, all sanded, looks great. This piece is now bonded in place. I did go ahead and put a little bit of a rounded edge here and here. Uh, just because from here up is going to stick up above the gunnel. Um, I do a little more shaping later, uh, just so it's not like squared off Viking ship looking uh, round, round edges and all that stuff. But you'll never see this wood. Uh, I do plan to gel coat this boat. Um, it's not, uh, since I'm not making it out of some beautiful mahogany type of wood, uh, it is going to get a gel coat and probably have a little more modern modern take on a classic design. So I'll go ahead and turn this over, put it on the plan sheet, and we can show, get it in place here. So we have lines matching up all the way around. All the way down here. Right down the oh, right down the bottom curve. So there is a finished stem. First piece on the Boson 11 is now complete. So thanks for watching this episode of uh, the Boson 11 project. 
stem is done and uh, next I'll start working on frame number one. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, send me some comments and hit the like button if you liked it. We'll see you next time on the Wisco Boater Channel. Happy boating everybody.